Thank you for listening to a life-changing message from Pastor Kenneth Davis from Advancing the Kingdom Church in Conway, South Carolina. Make sure to stay tuned after the message for more information on how to connect with us. Enjoy the message. Ah, uh, let's pick up somewhere here where God wants us to. Your Bible's open, Matthew chapter 13. We've been sharing on the wheat and the tares, and it seems like the Holy Spirit's had us kind of in that particular vein, and I think it's been very uh, enlightening. But let's just let's just start there and see where where the Lord uh, Matthew chapter thirteen. Let's start with verse nineteen, um, and just see how the Lord leads us from there. It says, "When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, and I want to I want to say real quickly, I know a lot, we we use this scripture a lot, and we've been using it pretty much every Wednesday, but." The more you hear it, you will begin to understand a depth of this word. You know, because you did, how many of you just eat one time today? No hands? You didn't eat one time? You eat about three times. How many how many's only eat a steak one time in their whole life? Joe, get off the front row. Great day, son. Lord, forgive him for lying. Bless his heart. <laughs> so you eat a steak more than one time because you remember what it tasted like but sooner or later you forget you just remember it was good but I sure need another one and that's the word of God it's good it's good to eat it as much as we can so it says when uh, anyone hears the word of the kingdom does not understand it then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart praise the Lord next verse but he who received the seed on stony places, this is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet has no root in himself, but endures for a little while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of what? You want to know why you're under attack? You want to know why you're under attack? The less word you have, the less fire you'll come under. The more word you get and understand, the more the enemy is going to come for that word. Yeah. And it's more of an opportunity for you to be able to prove that word when you begin to exercise it through the power of God and the Holy Spirit. So coming under attack is not my fault. It's not the church's fault. And it's really not that you're some sinner that you need to get some things cleared. It's the more you seek after the word, the more you're going to come under fire. It's just, and the Bible's plain with that. But we have a right to retaliate and use the word that we know. Amen. It says, tribulation, persecution arise, and immediately he stumbles. Now he who received seed, remember the word is seed, among thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. And he becomes unfruitful. Cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches. Mm. But he receives seed on good ground. Is he who hears the word, understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some hundred, some sixty, and some thirty fold. <clears throat> now it says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom. <laughs> First, you've got to hear the kingdom word. You've heard enough religious word. Hmm? The more I read the New Testament, especially the Gospels, you see so many times where Pharisees and Sadducees and the church folks purposely tried to set Jesus up so he would break the law. And if you know anything about the law, they added... I, who, 
several hundred more to up to a thousand more laws to the laws that were already implemented. And they would try to set Christ up, whether it was healing on the Sabbath. Well, most of the time it was Sabbath, the Sabbath day. You broke the law on the Sabbath because literally they said no work in Deuteronomy can be done on the Sabbath. And they took that and said you couldn't, if you were a seamstress, if you had so much as a needle in your pocket, you labored, you'd broke the law. If a Pharisee or Sadducee looked or walked past a woman and made eye contact, he broke the law. Um, and it, the crazy list goes on. If, if, you, if a man was sick with an open wound, you could bandage the wound but not put salve on the wound to help it heal. Come on, y'all looking at these. This is some of the laws. Kind of like stuff you've heard. Well, you can preach the gospel if you're not a woman. You can preach the gospel if you've not been divorced. God will use you for certain things and certain things he won't. God calls some to heaven and some to hell. Predestination. I do not believe in predestination. You have a choice. If we have predestination, that makes me and you a robot. We have no choice in the matter. God does not. Ephesians is clear. He said, I created a race that had a free choice that Satan could not look at me and said, I made robots, but he could, they could look at me and say, I choose him. That's our choice as free agents in the earth. So I don't believe in predestination. Some people are damned for hell and some are not. I think that's a farce. And among other words, I could call it. So we got to hear kingdom word and understand it in order for us to be effective. Now, I know some of you look at me and you'll tilt your head a little bit, kind of like Joe's puppies did today. <laughs> when I, and by the way, I spanked me a puppy today. Those of you that don't like spank, I spanked him. It's just on YouTube, maybe Petey will come get me. But when a dog tries to bite me, he gets spankings. <laughs> and Joe, being the Joe he is, he said, what is going on? <laughs> Glory to God. So the closer we get to winning the war, the more desperate and vicious Satan gets to steal the kingdom word from your heart and lives. He gets vicious with it. But the Bible says we've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. I love that verse that he translated me into the kingdom of his dear son and not his religious son. I'm, I've, I, you and I have been translated into a kingdom of mandate a kingdom call and a place that we can operate as kings and priests on the earth. Now turn to Ephesians 20. I mean, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 3. Those of you that are new tonight, we usually try to, or I, I attempt to teach a little. Sunday we get, well, Sunday speaks for itself. We, we get a little more, more preaching Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. The Bible says in Luke 18 that God came, sent his son. Jesus said, I came to preach deliverance to the captives. You and I were captive. He came to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the bind, and set at liberty those who were oppressed by the devil. When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. Now, at one time, we were all oppressed by the devil with no arsenal to retaliate. But now, as Christians born again, blood-bought new creations, we have a right to not be oppressed anymore. Now, I believe the body of Christ is struggling with this at a great rate, that we live in a depressed society. We live in an oppressed atmosphere, and we talk it more than, than we should in order to entitle the devil access to our minds and our family because we have at every fingertip today something to help oppression or depression or help me get over my 
twitch that I have. Where the word of God is powerful and it will do what it says it will do. Kind of like Sunday I told you, my little girl, I told her, if you want your eyes better, tell them every day you get up what you want your eyes to do. She wears glasses. She's eight years old. And I said, if you would tell your eyes every morning what you want them to be, I said, your eyes will be exactly what you tell them. I said, you want to bet daddy on that deal? She said, that's a foolish bet because I know the word works. Now, she's eight years old. Here we are, 30, 40, 50, some of us in our 70s, and we still struggle. Is God really going to do what he said he'll do in his word? God, it isn't that God cannot lie. He, there's no way for God to lie to you. He goes on in Hebrews to tell you that by two immutable things that I cannot lie, I swore by myself when God said he looked to the moon, to the stars, to the universe, everything he looked to to bless Abraham, he said that I looked to, I created. So in other words, if I created it, then I can easily do away with it. But the one thing God said will never do away with or never go away is me. So he said to Abraham, I swear by myself that I will bless you, I will multiply you, and your your name will be great among many nations and out of you will come the nations of the earth. And God's telling him nothing can stop that. Nothing can hinder that. I'm God. You're man. I decide to come and covenant with you. Not because you're good, but because I'm good. Not because you deserve it. It's because I'm full of mercy. Not because I want you to have something that I don't want to give. Them. I want to give grace and extend grace to all mankind that will come and reach out to me because I'm, I'm a loving God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so in order to do a kingdom work and receive kingdom word, you first have to do what Romans 12, 2 says is transform your mind. Because if you Continue to think like a peasant, you will never reach the palace. And we've all been a peasant for long enough. We think we're slaves. You are no longer slaves, but you are free men and women to make a choice to serve God and use the word effectively in the earth. We are no longer slaves. But we've lived in the field so long that when God brings us to the palace, we don't know how to act, so we run back to the field. Because that's where we're comfortable with our attitudes, our strongholds, the precavities that we live with, the things that, that we've grown up with that has helped shape our lives. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I sit today and I was thinking, you know, just a few years ago, we didn't have a church. And you would want to think that when you start a church in the name of Jesus Christ where the sign says, Advancing the Kingdom Church, Right? Advancing the kingdom church, and I'm not against, keep in mind, no denominational thing, but I refused to put my name on that sign with Baptist so-and-so, Pentecostal so-and-so, Church of God so-and-so. I said, this is about, and you notice on that sign it says, Jesus is Lord. Yes. Show me many of them in this city. And I've had people come to me and say, who gives you to right, the right to put on their advancing the kingdom because you're a Jehovah Witness? I said, did you drop your eyeballs down and read the rest? Jesus is Lord. I said, I've never seen that on a Jehovah Witness sign. Well, you know what I mean. I said, no, I don't know what you mean. So anytime you start coming for kingdom word, let me tell you, the devil comes at it hard, fast, and quick. And you got to come at him just as hard. Because yeah. warfare always surrounds your next miracle. Warfare will always surround your next miracle. If you're in the middle of war right now, you can believe you're on the verge of your miracle. If there's hell breaking loose all around you and things have been falling apart, you can believe you are on the edge of your miracle that God's about to birth through you for all to see. And the enemy fights it very, very hardly. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly, beyond measure, above all others, abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Do y'all see that? Yes. God's telling you I can do above what you can ask 
and think. I had the pleasure of sitting with a, a, a guy at the bank uh, Monday morning. And looking at me because I had an old holy t-shirt on, holy jeans, boots. How can I help you, sir? You know. I thought I had about $20 in my checking account, and it was overdrawn. I come in there to make sure the check didn't bounce. I said, I come to get a number changed on my account. So we went into a room. Well, he found out quickly that I'm not some peasant. And he asked me a question. I can't particularly remember how he asked it. Oh, he says, do you mind me asking your occupation? I said, I sure don't. I said, I'm a kingdom man. <laughs> but what do you do? I said, I preach the gospel of a king. He said, I got you. I says, and I don't box my king in with what I think he can do. I allow him to box me in with what he wants me to do. I said, I've never said God can only do certain things. He can do all things through me, the Bible says, and I will never limit him. That's the kind of God he is. This guy sits back in his chair, his tears down, running down his face. He looks left, looks right. We're by ourselves in the office, but he didn't want to lose his job because we're talking Jesus. <laughs> He said, man, I want you to know God sent you to me today. I said, well, he did. I said, the Bible says our footsteps are ordered by the Lord. So I know I'm here to get a number change, but it was for you. And I proceeded to let the Holy Ghost just speak. He's, he says, I feel I'm being renewed as you talk to me. Now, now, that's God's word. That's a Christian in action. That's not to be boisterous about. That's what we should be when we get around people. Lord, what am I here for? And, and I get to release something. Did it help me? Not necessarily so. But did something come out of my, my well, my river, that I got to feed somebody with the Holy Spirit word to come up that changed his life? Sure. That's what we're here for. He said, can I connect with you? I said, yeah, but be careful. Got a lot of enemies. I said, I'll tell you how to connect with me. Meet me at the river June the 9th. I said, we're going to be preaching. I said, come out, invite some people. He said, I'm Baptist. I said, that's who we want. Bring the Baptists. Bring your church. I said, bring them all. I said, we welcome them all. He said, I'll do that. I said, come on. <laughs> So the Bible says, above what we ask or think according to the power. Now here's the key, church. Jesus said, I come preaching deliverance. The Bible says that when the kingdom word comes, that the enemy comes to steal. Why? Because he says, I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask according to the power that works in you. According to the power that works in you. First of all, we got to be born again. We have to receive Jesus as Lord. Second of all, there is a baptism of the Holy Ghost. There is a baptism with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The Bible's plain with that. But most of all, the Word of God is your source of faith. Without no Word, there's no faith. And when it says, according to the power that works in me, well, the Word's the gasoline. The more word I got, I got a tank full of gasoline. All I got to do is hit, let the Holy Ghost light the match. Because I got a tank full of word in me. And the Holy Spirit said, now I got gasoline to work with. I can set you on fire. But when you don't sup with Jesus, when we don't read the word, when we don't know what the word says, when we don't know how to pray, when we don't know the covenant promises, when we don't know we're worthy of the blood of Jesus to be applied, when the Holy Spirit calls on us, we have nothing to work with. So we tap into a religious saying that we heard and religious mindset that has not been renewed. Do you understand that? That I can't do it. It's impossible. According to the power that works in us, <laughs> he can do exceedingly above all that we can call for, comprehend, 
And the power that works in us, the Bible says in the Greek, is an efficient power that will work every time, all the time for you. Now, if the enemy's coming to steal the word, and he does, and he will, I've never had the enemy come to me when somebody tells me, you know what, you, especially when I got born again at 23, you're too young to preach the gospel. I said, well, show me in the Bible where's the age limit. Yeah, but you haven't been to seminary. I said, I don't plan to go. Don't plan to go. I don't have the time, and I don't have the money at that time. Boy, y'all kind of looking at me like, where is this going? <laughs> but when they come to you and tell you you can't, you, you, you ever notice most Christians will tell you what you can't do, never tell you what you can do? Huh? I hear what you're saying, son, but, you know, come on, that can't be that. I hear what you're saying about a revival in the city of Colorado. Come on, you messing with a black man, you half-breed, it ain't going to work, you know, y'all. Y'all going to mess things up. Ain't no white people going to come. White, black, Indian, Hispanic, Chinese, yellow man, it doesn't matter. That God, God says I call people to come. So whoever comes, God will call them. Right? We've lost that connection that God's big enough to call his people to Meet, a, meet together and have a great time in the Lord and get born again and get saved and get healed. So in order for us to get re results, we have to go back to the fact that the Bible says that when we hear the word, it said stony ground. <laughs> Glory to God. Which represents a hard path now, keep in mind, this is talking about our hearts. A hard path that represents a shut mind. A mind which refuses to take in the word fully, and the devil gets to steal it easy. We argue, kind of, we, we argue and debate with the word. Ever done that? I, even when you read it with your eyes, you're like, well, I know he says, by his stripes I'm healed, but does he really heal? How does healing look? How do I make healing work for me? What, am, I too, am I good enough? Did I sin yesterday and negate my healing? Jesus is bigger than what we think he is. He, he, he will do for you whatever you ask him to do. So it's a mind that is shut up. We have where it says seed fell in uh, soil that, that had no depth to it. Shallow ground. Those people accept the word but never think it out and never realize its consequences. The dirt that the seed fell in is very, very slim. We never think it out. We never rationalize it. We never think about the consequences. And therefore, we collapse when strain comes. When things come to strain you, we collapse. We quit church. We, we, we quit Christian relationships. We, we blame the pastor for things. And the enemy sits back because look, what I'm trying to get you to see, church, we need to make it a little harder on the devil to steal from us and not just give him, give him everything we got. You don't have to. Yes. The thorny ground stands for those lives who are so busy, so busy that things of God get crowded out. We don't have time for church, church activities, church functions, prayer times, prayer meetings. Calling and encouraging a brother or sister in the Lord. Going to our events that other church may, churches hold, you know, and be a part of it. Just, and personally taking time by ourselves just to pray and intercede for not only your personal church and life, but other churches in the area that pray that God moves. So the thorny ground represents someone that's let the word be crowded out by their busy lifestyle. Cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches, pride of life, pleasures, and lust of the eyes. Now, a lot of times we think of lust and we go to, to sexual things, but that's not necessarily what it's talking about. It's talking about things that we want to get and accomplish in this life before we ever give ourselves over to Christ, to that love affair. And people try to use a humble 
You ever been around people that has a false humility? You can pick up on as good as you know this is a pulpit. They have a false humility about them. They, they say, that, well, I will, I, I'm going to church, but, and God knows my heart, and, and I, I'm going, you know, the Lord knows, and God bless you, I'm glad you, and thank you for mentioning the church to me, but I'm really busy right now, but good God, the Lord knows my heart, and I'm a good person, and by the way, I, I sent to Mother Teresa's things, uh, I sent a couple, some money over there, and, and I'm really feeling good about myself, but I'll come to church at a later date, but right now, things are kind of, I'm just in the middle of my career boom, I'm climbing the corporate ladder. Things are looking so good for me. And by the way, when I reach where I'm going, I will help you build the church. And you ever heard those stories? Never do that, church. I promise if you put Christ first, you will soar anywhere. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, I will bless what you put your hand to. When you put your hand on it, God says, I command the blessing. First him. What? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. Then these things shall be added to you. Deuteronomy 1 and 11 says, I will increase you a thousand times more. I will increase you a thousand times more. Do you understand that? So we have to come back to, okay, Lord, let this word make a deposit in me. Let this word take root in my heart. That I'm, I'm not bickering, backbiting, talking, gossiping, down in racism, prejudice, all these things that we do other than coming to him and seeing him for who he is, the king of glory, the king of kings that has called me, set me aside for such a time as this, just as we preach Sunday uh, out of the book of, uh, of, of Esther. <laughs> Satan will begin to attack anyone, anyone, and I mean anyone that thinks they're a candidate for the blessing to flow in their life. When you step to the front and say, Lord, that's me, I will stand with you toe to toe, he immediately comes to start stealing. He begins to start to rob. He begins to start to pull down. Now, David made a statement in Psalms 143. He said, Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteous sake, being my soul is, and bring my soul out of trouble. When we get in trouble for the word, because the Bible says when troubles come, they come for the word's sake. When people come at you, when I was in the world, and you, 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 you guys also, how many people come to you when you weren't saved and criticized you? None. How many people come to you and just bashed you? But when you got born again, it's almost like a measuring stick come out. Now I'm going to measure your life, not to Christ, but I'm going to measure you against me. You with me? Yeah, amen's okay. Amen will keep me moving. We don't go by the word and let Christ be the plumb line of our life. We get and we go back to our personal thinking. And if Joe says, I got born again at the river June the 9th. I say, really? What were you doing prior to that? Well, I was living this lifestyle and I was a heathen and a culprit and a liar and a thief. And I judged people and I stole and I, I've done it all. So... Where are you going to church? I don't know yet because I just got born again there, but the people holding the revival, I'm going to go to one of their church. Well, I'd be real careful with that. Come on. So you got saved at the revival, but you can't go to their church. Because he might mess up and say, they laid hands on the sick and they got healed. And by the way, I, got, I, didn't, I didn't mean to leave out. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and I got my prayer language. Oh, my God. <laughs> That happened to you at the river? Come on. <laughs> Almost like a UFO landed at the river. <laughs> because immediately Satan will use any assets he has, even yes. if it's your Christian brothers, to steal truth from you. Yes. Hmm? Do you hear me? Because the kingdom word in your mouth, what did he say? He can do above and beyond all we can ask or think. So that means I don't have the capacity to ask it. I don't have the capacity to think what God has for me and what he can do through me. Right? 
Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah. It's telling me he can do above what I can ask or think. Yeah. So that means God is bigger than me. So how do I get into asking him rightly? Well, y'all got your attention? That's right. Pray in the Spirit. Because the Bible says you pray the mysteries of God and He releases them to the earth. So in other words, my natural mind cannot comprehend the spiritual things of God. So I got to go in here where this thing got renewed like in Job. That heathen Job got saved and now he's out here. He's still a heathen. But he got born again in here, but he's training here. Good God, hurry up and train him. Because the Bible said we got to renew this stuff. But I have to learn to tap into here because when the enemy comes and I'm meditating on the word that I have, the Bible says meditate. That means to murmur. That means to quote. That means to say it over and over. And that thing's starting to drop down. It'll start dropping. Now, now, now murmuring, that don't, don't mean, my God, I got to go back to church and hear another dumb blah, 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 blah. No, 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 that's not what it means. It means you murmur. Thanks be unto God that through him I shall triumph in all things. And my enemy shall flee from me seven ways, though he come at me one. He will flee from me. I cannot be defeated because I can do the impossible through the possible God. And I can begin to quote these things. And for you know it, they drop down in here. Now to the next level of that, the Bible says I pray the mysteries. So I'm meditating on that thing, and I run out of ways to express the Word of God. So I'll begin, and here's where the Holy Spirit comes in. You start walking and talking, saying, Lord, thank you, and I glorify you, and I thank you that we're going to have a mighty revival and victory, and I give you glory and honor. Your Word says, And I begin to pray things, and then I can stop and say, Holy Spirit, interpret that for me. Well, that scares you, don't it? Come on, you do it on Facebook. Can you resend that to me? I didn't understand what you said. Come on. <laughs> Why not ask the Holy Ghost? Can, can you download that to me? That I can get this in line with this. That before I open this, I got this and this straight. And now when I open this, I got the arrow of the Lord coming out of my mouth. Yes. The devil can't beat that. The devil can't beat that people say pray for revival pray for revival you preach revival you preach revival pray for healing you preach healing pray for baptism you preach it how do you know until you get it preached to you hmm yeah but my lord we can't I'm just so mad how many is tired of being miserable because if you are miserable and I, I can feel that in my spiritual reason I have. I know what miserable feels like. It stinks. It makes me want to beat Joe. And it, <laughs> thank you for sitting on the front row. Right God bless you, man. <laughs> when you are miserable, would your Christian walk? It's your easy target for the devil. And the only reason we get miserable is because is how you perceive yourself in your own eyes. Yes. Hmm? You look at yourself through, through eyes that are not renewed, mind that is not renewed. And when you look in the mirror, you look at a flawed person. Yes. And you've not accepted grace and mercy and the righteousness of God that washes you and made you new and whole again. So every time you mention, kind of like today, that guy, he said, that is the craziest man I ever met. And I looked at my wife. I said, how could, uh, I don't understand where they get, get that from. And I got to thinking. <laughs> I got to thinking about a night. You know, you know we all got that night. Right? Y'all know. Some of you still look. Some of y'all are looking very like, oh, I've never done. You've all had that night, that one night, that, that thing. Like, my God, I hope it never comes out. <laughs> Joe, quit laughing. We all know you had it. <laughs> 
So here in the Holy Spirit said, don't tell about that night. <laughs> That's a part of a testimony, right? <clears throat> so here in a word from the king begins to download to us the king's heart. Okay? And in order to be effective in the kingdom, we first got to have the king's heart. I used to pray all the time, Lord, teach me your plans, your purpose, and your will for the lives of people. And not my plans, purpose, and will, even for my own life. My life is not my own, it's yours. And there comes a time when you must sell out fully that you are not your own, but you are owned by Christ. Paul made a statement that I'm a bondservant unto the Lord. I'm a slave. Anything I do, I do because he told me to. Anything I have, I have because he gave it to me. And anything he wants, he's allowed to take because I am his and he is mine. And I no longer own myself. Now, that's a big thing in the world we live in. In order for a kingdom word to work, you first got to sell out to the king's heart. Yes. Uh, you with me? Yes. And a lot of times... I'm going to tell you a lot of times in the middle of teaching and preaching when the Holy Spirit begins to move on you and download on you, we grieve, we grieve. The Bible says you can grieve the Holy Spirit. We grieve His moving on us, which means we're grieving the heart of God. We reject, we, we don't purposely reject truth, but subconsciously because of what we have in us. We grieve the Holy Spirit because you, there's not a person here who tell, can't tell me that when the Holy Spirit begins to woo you, you feel that love affair start. And it's the best thing you'll ever get. He will pull at you. There's a scripture in the Bible, I'm trying to remember it, it, it translates, he will flirt with you. Come on, y'all know what flirting is, don't you? Hey, hey this crowd is saved. Y'all are, y'all are really, y'all the real deal, man. <laughs> says he will flirt with you and give you a little bit of himself in order to lure you out so you, he can be alone with you. Yes. This is when the kingdom word is preached. It's not necessarily for you to say, well, I got the Bible. I heard that. It's for you to take that word, fall in love with it, get it in your heart, take it to your secret place. Take it to your private place. Everybody in here should have a private place. I mean, no phone, no anything other than worship music and a Bible. You should have that place where you go and say, Lord, I'm here for you. And the word that come Wednesday from the pastor or Sunday or the CD I have, I want to understand more about you. This is what he said. And take you a scripture out of that sermon and write it down and put it before your eyes and say, now this, I want to know more about you. Show me your heart. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something about God. He's not withholding anything from you. Do you hear me? We've been trained that we have to meet a quota in order for God to do things for us. That means you're working in the law. What God does for you is through grace and mercy. So when the word comes, the enemy, the more kingdom word comes, the more enemy tries to pluck it up. Can you imagine how busy his demons are trying to pluck all the word up that's been preached here? And I, I can't, he has done a pretty good job in some of our lives. But he's steady plucking up. But anything you ask God for, he will do. I asked God one time years ago. I got so tired. Anybody ever been there? Those, those of you from a charismatic background, when I mean, you've been around it, they can get down, right? And we had that in the 90s, the charismatic move. I was right in the middle of that. My, this woman here said I was full of the devil, possessed by the devil, and she didn't want to be around me. Because you dance, they dance, and they overly did some things. Dance, shout. You know, run a, I've seen people run to chairs and that sort of thing. But everybody come up and said, the fire of God. <laughs> the fire of God. And I walked to the front and I said, Lord, I don't want a man to touch me. You are the fire. Yes. This is true. She witnessed it and several others. I said, I don't need, to, and it was a visiting pastor, I don't want him to touch me. I don't want him to pray for me. You ever get to where you don't want anything from me? You want God to move for you. Yes. I'm done with everybody. Yay! Everybody, whoa! <laughs> Especially them that'll grab your head. I told money, I feel the Lord on you. Glory to God, and he's all on you. 
They wrestle you to the floor. <laughs> Man, I, our service is picking up. Joe said I messed his hair up. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> I said to the Lord, if you are fire, then you touch me with your fire. Now, that, that's me being, you, you ever been so frustrated? You're like, you're going to have to do something, God. I said, I've had them pray for them. I said, you're fire, so you touch me with your fire. Give me a glimpse of who you are. Before the words left my tongue, the power of God hit me so strong, I believe my heart stopped for a split second. I fell face forward in the carpet, and when I come to, I begin to yearn. And when I say yearn, I yearn, and this is where I know not by medical terms that Jesus prayed, and it said drops of blood come from his forehead. When I yearned so down in here, and what was coming out, one, strongholds were coming up. Two, destiny was being birthed. And I yearned down there on that floor for probably 15 or 20 minutes, and when I stood up and finally got strength, everybody looked at me like this. So I'm like, you know, like you did when you, you know, had a little wobble going on. I said, they're looking at me like I'm from outer space. And I heard the pastor say, call the paramedics. Now you've been in a visitation with God and they're calling the paramedics. I said, he worked my mind over. <laughs> she said to me, go to the bathroom. When I went to the bathroom, I had all the way up through my forehead, out that far sticking out, blood vessels that were starting to bleed. I looked like a Martian from yearning before God. Now, as I said, you could see them go in and dissipate. And I said, wow. But that day birthed something in my life on that floor that only God could have done yes. because I asked God. And when the devil comes for the word of God, let me tell you who guards it. God will guard his word. Yes. But we first have to receive that word. What does it say? With gladness. Hmm? Love thy neighbor. Hmm. I just don't celebrate that, Lord. I don't love. That's God's word. Love thy neighbor as thyself. How many does that? Come on. <laughs> Joe's my neighbor. <laughs> we, we find it simple, but he said, love. Jesus said, I'm going to go a step further than the law. He said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. Your neighbor pulls in, you say, good God, I thought they was going to wreck before they come home. Another day. <laughs> Huh? Ain't that the love of the Lord? <laughs> and when we say these things, the enemy has a right to steal what you already had. Because the Bible says the work works by what? Love and faith. Faith works by what? Love. When we do this revival in the city, you know why it's going to work? Because we're doing it out of love. You know why people are going to get saved? Because you're dedicating, and I'm dedicating time that God gave me to do it out of love. Amen. No money, no getting money's getting paid. Just I love people, and God, I want to see them saved. That's why when we gather there, it's meeting with God because we love people. Amen. Amen. And when you love people, I found when you stand up there, remember I said meditate, murmur, Think on the word. You can take one scripture, and I challenge you to learn one scripture that you know that you know that you know. When the preachers come up and, well, do you know Matthew chapter 10? No, sir. And they do it. You read the Bible this year? Nope. Do you have seven uh, John Henry's 1911 concordance? No, I got 1987, though, because I like that year. I like the trucks. You know, they'll ask you all kinds of religious questions. Say, but I do know this one scripture. And whatever God may do, whatever that may be, when you release it out of your mouth, I'm telling you, it will thunder in their ears. Why? Because you've settled that word. Yes. There's a difference in here and here. 
Big difference. There's a difference. What I tell you Sunday, faith in God and faith toward God. It's a big difference. Now, I was reminded today by the Holy Spirit, and I want to say this to you, and I'm going to close, because I didn't have a plan for no message. I just planned to come to church. You know, I showed you, in the, well, matter of fact, there's the, the thorns and the vine. How many since we have mentioned the thorns, and God said, speak to the vine, which is, has found yourself in the middle of a lot of onslaught, a lot of warfare. Right? Because we were talking about the Word. And the thorns choked the Word. We just read it. Anytime a prophetic word is released like that, the enemy comes to bring spiritual backlash. Okay? So that's what you've been feeling. Those of you that felt warfare, that's what you've been feeling. But God says, it's a training ground. Don't, see, here's what we'll do. We'll start speaking to the thorns and not to the vine which represents the Word of God. I've done it since I released that Word to you. Remember tonight I released that in here and, and, and Travis brought this, this vine? I found myself being plucked by more thorns around me. Now thorns could be many things going on. Depression, loneliness, financial difficulty, huh? body ailments attacking you. Your, your job, your work goes down. People coming against you, backbiting you. These thorns come all around. Your house is in disarray. And the Lord said, you started speaking to the thorn and you quit speaking to the vine. Now, I'm saying that tonight for if you've done that, because I have as the pastor, speak the word. Declare the word over it. And you tell, remember I said the Lord in that dream told me to speak to the vine and it come from among the thorns and begin to wrap around me and produce exact, because you guess what? You're the branch. He's the vine, and the vine will always tie into the branch. Yes. So if you spoke to the thorns, can you stand to your feet for me? You have just listened to a dynamic message from Pastor Kenneth Davis. To listen or receive more powerful messages from Pastor Kenneth, like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube page under Advancing the Kingdom Church. Make sure to visit our website at advancingthekingdomchurch.org. Or visit us at 1601 11th Avenue, Conway, South Carolina. For more information, feel free to call us at 843-488-4789. Thank you for listening and God bless. And remember, Jesus is Lord.